So what is up guys? I thought I'd make a little quick video here. I've got this um, little tiny Russian army Morse key and uh, as you can see it's got this very strange connector on it. Now this is obviously designed for a specific radio system in the Russian military and um, it will not plug in any of the radios I have. So um, I thought I'd come down here and rewire it. I purchased um, I don't know, there's about five feet worth of wire on Amazon right here as you can see but it's got a mono plug and it's um, two conductor and the battery's dying in my camera so and um, so uh, we'll have to go get a new battery for the camera before it finished but as you can see this is a two conductor cable and what I'm going to have to do is figure out how to wire it into this and I don't know if I'm going to splice it to this cable or go inside here and actually redo it. So I'll be right back when I change this back. Okay, so the, the, the question becomes do I take this apart and use this existing cable and just attach it to this? I've already taken this connector apart once. Or do I just go inside here and re solder these wires? And I think I'm going to do the latter. So stand by let me put this back together the only reason I do that I, I, I decided to do it this way and yeah, just to keep it all original I think instead of tearing up a connector I'll just go inside the actual key itself and it just has a screw on this side and a screw on this side and you just loosen them up a little bit and then this um metal uh, cover comes right off of there as you can see so then there's two wires coming out one to here and one two well that doesn't have anything soldered on to yes it does too and they're jumped so there's two wires coming out of this cable one goes to here that's jumper to the frame here okay so let me clean this up a little bit and um, with some contact cleaner it'll be right back. This is what I use to um, um, clean electrical stuff just before I start soldering. Get a little dust and uh, things like that out of the way, you know. Um, just, a, just a quick type of thing. So it looks like that screw holds this. Um, this is, so this is a strain relief right here. So this screw on the bottom looks like it holds down a little bit of strain relief on this cable which is good to know because of my my cable is not quite big enough for that so I'm going to have to figure out how I can secure my cable in here so let me just start taking this off and to see how this works They're very small brass screws now this little plate is interesting this plate um, I don't have the whole thing. This little plate, as you can see, is kind of like got tapered ends here. And um, there's a um, a leg strap, and there's a metal ring on that leg strap, but this actually locks into into place on there, which is pretty cool. But it's hard to find um, old military surplus stuff where everything's complete. So all I have is the key, which is all I really wanted at the time. Well, I think I'm turning the whole shebang here, so, yep. I don't know if I got a wrench small enough to get in there, but I got to get this out, so. I have to use something old faithful here. Get some pliers in there to hold that little nut. Let's see if I can do it this way. Mm, nope, I've got the washer. There we go. It's the only thing about working with small things. Okay, so the nut's off. I'm gonna set that right inside here. Alright, so I got the strain relief off with the washer. That one way back there. Okay, so that's soldered to there. And to there. So I gotta 
That's an interesting piece of wire right there. That's a lot of wire for a little jumper. If I burn my fingers here, which is not unusual. Oh, they really got that thing wrapped around in there pretty good. Now this is some um, solder wick, but it's um, got flux in it, so it should pull this solder right out of here pretty good. I think I need to cut a piece of it off. See all that solder pulled out of there? Cleaned it up nice. Pretty good. I'll touch it up a little bit better. Make sure you put a lot of solder on here. Wow. I thought they wrapped the wire around there pretty good too. There we go. It's a lot of solder. All right, and one more right here. I wonder why they just didn't solder one wire to that. Very interesting to me. Let me get this out of the way there. As you can see it pulls a lot of it pulls a lot of solder out with this solder wick. Let's snip it off and start again. I don't know how this is gonna work. It's working pretty good. Yeah, this wire is just all kinds of twisted up in that hole. Alright, I'm going to turn the camera off while I clean this up. I'll be right back. Alright, so I did some experimentation so I know that um, when I hit a, when I hit, when I key the, the keyer, for lack of a better term, um, this should be the tip of this connector right here. The white is the um, the ground side, so the white cape wire is going to go to these two connectors, and the red one's going to go to here. I've already owned it out; I know that's how it is. So I'm going to strip this off a little bit more, so I can get this wire is going to go here, and I need enough room for it to come from the strain relief up to here. That's almost long enough, but not quite. And this one needs to go a little bit farther, so I'm going to strip quite a bit back here. And the strain relief, I'll just go ahead and put that back on it. It's going to go that way. And the strain relief is going to go right in here, like so. And that little screw will come up through there. Although, I might need to go around. I can't remember how it was routed. So I need to try to route them about the same way. So this one, I need to cut and strip about from right here. Like this scientific approach I'm doing here eyeballing everything so first things first let me see if I can get this piece of strain relief to hold everything in place this actually might work
All right, so I got the nut started. I'm, now I've got to fish these wires through here like this. So, sorry I had to do that off camera, but uh, it was a little frustrating. This is a little frustrating too, but. So it's pretty snug. Oh, no, it's not either. All right, well, it's in there sort of good, and I'm not going to complain about it too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and solder these on here. And um, call it good. So now this, I got to be careful. This is... I'm sorry, this is where the lid's got to come back down, so I might just leave that like that. It's not interfering with anything, so that will put this through here. Okay, so this should work just fine, and once I solder it, I'll tuck those wires up a little bit better. And this should be getting in here. And, I don't know, I might put a dab of hot glue in here to hold that. That might be what I do, so... We go ahead and start soldering some of this stuff here. Nice and shiny. All right. So now what I'll do is I will. Of course, it's going to work if I do it like this. I mean, so we see. At least we know the continuity is there, right? So I just need to tuck this up here a little bit. Get that out of the way. Now that's not in the way of anything. No pivoting, no moving parts. Now I'll slide that back on. But first, I think I am going to get some hot glue right on that. And my hot glue method is very simple. I use a lighter and a glue stick I thieved from my, my wife. And I would just heat this up here like that and stick it in there. Maybe do a little bit more. There we go. I'll keep this together with the rubber band. So the hot glue got on there good. That'll help. I'll put this cover back on. There's a washer on this one right here. Oh, there's a washer right here. I want to get behind them, this metal bit. So I'll just push it up here and I'll push the other one back. Like so. And the other one there. Snug these two up. Snug this one up. All right. And that should work. As long as I don't put a bunch of stress on this, I think I'm fine. I'm not going to be yanking and yanking this anyway, right? Next thing I need to do is find a base for this. So I got the cable on there. Got the old wiring off. Got the new wiring on. And I didn't bring a speaker down here, but I think I will be... I'll go get a... Um, I'll be back in just a minute. We'll get the speaker and I'll hook it up to my radio and we'll check it out. All right, you guys remember maybe one B. I got my speaker plugged in this time before I do anything. The speaker is turned on. Now, here's the key. And remember, if I were to use this paddle right here, I'd have to use this jumper to go from uh, this connection down here to this one. And this knows if you have an iambic paddle or a straight paddle. So let's plug this in to the paddle. Right? Oh, hey, you focusing over here? Here we go. Let's see what it what it tells us. Okay, so it's an M, which means it's a straight key. If it was an A, it would be an iambic paddle. So let's just see if this thing is working. Cause I got I do have it plugged into a dummy load right here, so I'm not transmitting. So it's working, which is a good thing. Now I'm no good with a straight key. I'm barely good with a paddle, but let's just see. <laughs> well, it's, it's very, it's very different. This is. I'm sure I could adjust the settings and the uh, the distance on here, but it's working. Well, there we go. That's how you convert 
one of these Russian military keys to be able to use with modern radios. It's pretty simple, um, but I thought I'd just throw that out there and uh, because I wanted to make a video. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, it's the tomorrow's Friday, uh, starting the first weekend of June. I hope everybody has a safe weekend and um, y'all be safe out there. Later on.